okay so welcome to this uh, online part platform again and uh, right now we will be delivering a lecture on the governing of the commons and now we will be taking a different standpoint and as you have already understood that we have already taken into account two seminal theories that expresses the situations of commons and what is the kind of problems that we are encountering in collective actions particularly in case of the commons itself. So, after understanding these two uh, theories, previous theories, Hardin's tragedy of the commons and Olson's theory uh, related to organization and the group itself. Now, let us focus on this theory that is developed by Ol, uh, Ostrom itself. So, basically we can say that we can highlight this theory on this ground, uh, the very ground that we need to see that by studying this uh, uh, Ostrom's uh, governing governance of the commons, we can actually understand the th a kind of research which we are saying it is a third generation research on the agenda of the common itself. So, the first thing that we need to understand is why we are saying it is a third generation research on the commons itself, because when you will be finding the literature on the commons itself, then we will we'll be finding that the, uh, the common uh, researches or the common problems on the uh, on the commons itself we are basically developed by Hardin who is talked about the exploitation of the of the resources by the users itself and because of which he talked about that there should be some mechanisms and otherwise the commons will be getting deteriorated and these mechanisms he propounded or he can actually explore the potential of the mechanisms that is either the privatization of this of the same resource or there should be the governance of the state or the a, a kind of uh, uh, enforcement that must be present. And similarly, if you look to the, uh, uh, the uh, theory propounded by Olson itself, then he talked about the same more or less the same thing along with the prisoner, prisoner's dilemma game. So, what is the contributions then here? So, uh, here also uh, want to highlight that uh, this perception on the commons, the way you are governing the commons, whether we are actually needing the privatization or the case of the state intervention, uh, intervention here is urgently necessary or there is some alternative way by which we can govern our own commons and we can also save our uh, commons from getting degradations. So, in this respect, the key objectives of this lesson is to understand the theory of collective actions taking the arguments uh, from the uh, from Eleanor Ostrom's and then we will be understanding why this theory is so important because we have already gone through two, uh, two important theories on the commons itself. And the second objectives of this lesson that we are uh, right now um, uh, interested to know how is this theory different from the other collective actions theories. And after that, after knowing this, the, the importance of the theory and the argument of uh, that uh, led by uh, Ostrom, then we can actually evaluate what is the pros and cons of this theory, taking into account the present day scenario of the commons. And if you want to um, know that what this, what, what this governance or uh, the uh, governance of the commons that is propounded by Eleanor Ostrom, we must take into account this, this masterpiece that talks about something different and who, which because of which we can say it is a kind of paradigm thinking in the very management and governance of the common itself. So, that she dealt with in this book that is governing the commons, the evolution of institutions for collective actions in 1990. So, and, and, and uh, again uh, she, has a, she has a list of books and a list of ideas that actually talks about the collective action problems. So, again another book she contributed uh, that is institutional incentives and sustainable development infrastructure policies in the perspective itself. Because sometimes you are saying that this collective action problem may not work by self governance itself. So, in the first book she talked about that how self governance is necessary is urgently necessary for the for governing the commons so that we can we can uh, save our commons to degrade further so that's why in this in the second book she talked about the right kind of institutional incentives for sustainable development of the sustainable development and management of the uh, commons itself 
And again uh, in her third book, she talked about rules, games and common pool resources. So, that is again the contributions or you can say the supplement to the existing knowledge that she uh, led for the first book. And uh, based, based on these theories or based on this understanding that she contributed in terms of different books to the literature of commons, then what is the Ostrom's theory on collective actions based on this understanding that we let us uh, talk about that what is the understanding of this uh, collective action so far argued by Eleanor Ostrom herself. So, the governing of commons this book is a kind of masterpiece at the present time although it has uh, it was written in 1990, but still in the present time you can find its relevance. So, that is why we can say since this analysis of Ostrom's, Ostrom's that focused on these uh, governance of the commons, it tried to avoid how to it tried to avoid basically the exploitation of common pool resources or how to have a kind of mechanisms that can save the commons or common pool resources itself. And as you understand that the very nature, nature of the common pool resources or commons that we have already talked um, in, the, in the very beginning uh, of our commons and the nature of public goods context. So, here you can find the very uh, so far the very features of the common pool resources as concerned then they are lacking these two criteria so far the excludability or non excludability and rivalry or non rivalry is concerned. So, what would be the very features of this uh, common pool resources? So, obviously, it would be a rival, but it is non excludability in nature. So, because of this peculiarity that it is non excludability in nature that is why the common pool resources does not have a very well defined individual property right. And because the, prop, the resource or common pool resource does not have well defined individual property right. So, this is the problem here. Again, when the resource is not having any well defined property right, then everyone can have access and everyone can share the benefits. So, if you remember the tragedy of the commons by uh, Garrett Hardin, then he talked about a scenario. So, there he talked that a, a scenario of a pasture that is that all the herders they can have equal access and everyone being the rational because they are following this rationality rule and in order to maximize their satisfaction and utility or in terms of profit from the herds itself they will be keep on adding one more one more and so that the resource uh, the grazing resource will degrade. And it happened because this commons does not have well defined property right. And that is why the, the resource is subject to degradations. So, this is the common belief at that point of time when she wrote this masterpiece that is governance of the commons. Because since, since the Hardin's time then uh, if you look into this literature of the commons from Olson to Hardin then we are finding actually the same story that in case of the commons if it is not governed properly by the mechanisms of privatization of the market or the state intervention then obviously, the resource will subject to degrade. And for the first time we, uh, we got some uh, different view on this on this remark. So, in this regard when you are saying that if there is no property right that is uh, by the individual property right itself then obviously, the resources will be subject to over exploitation or over uh, consumptions. And the peculiar uh, peculiar uh, strategies that we are believing from the economic literature or common pool literature we can find that these two strategies like your either the privatization of the resources or enforcement imposed by outside the force. That means, it may be the government mechanisms or government intervention will be here or either in terms of privatization if these two time types of strategies can be undertaken then the, the common pool resources can be st uh, saved. So, here we are talking about this enforcement imposed by outside means the state intervention or sometimes here uh, in Olson's remark he, he talked about the Leviathan the role of Leviathan. So, that means, a major power is there 
which can actually control over these resources in managing and governing. So, these are the two uh, popular beliefs and uh, in this context uh, actually uh, Ostrom talked about something different in order to uh, have a solution for this kind of problem. So, what is this alternative solution she talked about? So, she talked about that this kind of uh, common um, uh, commons problem or collective action problem can be solved by stable institutions of self governance. So, this is something like uh, innovative idea or it is a kind of really the new idea that we are finding in the commons literature. So, because he, we only knew that this commons can be can be preserved or it can be the resources of this commons can sustainably used if we are um, finding the state intervention mechanisms over there control of the states and there must be some rules and regulations uh, stated by the state itself or there would be the market mechanisms through the privatization system. But here she talked about that in order to ensure the resources to continue forever, we can have a stable institutions of self governance and uh, this mechanism can be possible if the problems related to the supply side, credibility side and monitoring side can be solved. So, so, the thing is that she for the first time she highlighted the role of the stable institutions that should be self governed. So, that means, somewhere she talked about the, uh, uh, the participation of the local community or the local users or the users who, who are uh, the party or the stakeholders of the common property resources. And they can actually uh, if uh, this, this kind of institutions be made then the self governance of the commons is possible, but there are certain problems that need to be a uh, fix that is the supply side problem that and the credibility problem and monitoring problem. So, if these three three uh, characteristics or the three issues are fixed, then there would be no problem in the self governance so far maintaining the stable institution for uh, governing the commons itself. And also she describes some key elements of the variables for successful common pool resource schemes that will be talking. And because of this contribution, because it is, is really novel, it is really something different idea she put forth and it is not the idea because she has uh, already taken into account so many empirical evidences from the countries like Japan, Switzerland, Philippines, uh, California, Canada and Turkey. So, the if you see the, the kind of resources she explored or taken into account for her field survey and the experience she uh, got. So, it talks about the, the high mount, mountain meadows, the uh, case of water project and irrigation systems and the fisheries which are largely commons and governed by or which uh, have uh, which uh, all these resources they do have the property of the common pool resources. So, because of uh, her contributions uh, in this commons literature and the idea she put forth that how to self govern the common pool resources. So, that the resources would be uh, providing its, its uh, characteristics for ever. So, because of which she got this Nobel prize in 2009 and the Nobel committee pres prescribed that she got this prize because of the analysis of economic governance focusing on common property itself although this the, uh, this price was shared and 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 uh, you can also think that she is the first woman till now she is the first woman uh, uh, to receive this nobel prize in the in this uh, field so what is the argument her argument actually challenges some established or conventional theories like that we have already taken into account the first theory she argued against is the tragedies of the, com, uh, of the commons and the second one is collective action problems by Olson and the third one that we have already taken into account that is prisoner's dilemma. So, these are the established theories and uh, 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 Olson's theory of governance of the commons uh, argued uh, and challenged these established theories. 
and prior to this uh, the, the uh, prior to her theory that is governance of the commons. So, uh, generally these established theories they underestimated the capacity of the community or the individual groups to manage their own collective goods or co own collective resources. So, that is why she argued that this common resources can be well managed, it can be well managed, but thing is that we need to have some kind of conditions. So, what is the conditions? The under the condition that those who benefit from these resources, these common pool resources, they must be in the close prox proximity to the resources. So, that means obviously, when, when uh, the users are in the close proximity to the resources, they can actually have a kind of group and that group will be self managing or self, self governing by some conditions or by some features. So, that the, uh, the, uh, the conventional idea that the tragedy will be happening to these commons in the existence of or for because of the lack of property right well def, uh, defined property right it will not actually happen. So, this tragedy in this in this commons may actually occur in the case when the external groups they exerted some power like social power or economic power or political power political power. So, this is again the uh, the uh, her her uh, unique idea that the com commons may meet the tragedy because of the interventions and these interventions are the outside interventions and these intervention may be the social groups and social power intervention in terms of social power interventions, in terms of economic powers, uh, power intervention or it may be in form of the political power in, uh, interventions. So, if these external groups they are exerting any kind of power socially, economically and or politically then those commons may face the tragedy otherwise not. And in this context in this very uh, basic understanding of the situations that how Ostrom talked about or argued against the established idea in managing the commons. So, in this regard the Ostrom explored the following questions like the first one could be that why have some efforts to solve common problems failed. So, what is the reason behind it? We are making efforts to solve the collective action problems or problems related to the commons, but still we, we are not very successful. So, what is the reason behind this? What are the factors they may attribute for the success or failure of the common commons? And the second thing she also talked about, she, is, she actually uh, wanted to know, inquired about what can we learn from the experience that will help stimulate development and use of better theory of collective actions. Because what about the existing theory that talked about the free rider problem. And apart from this free rider problem, so this kind of phenomenon or this kind of idea that the local uh, community they may get empowered a kind of empowerment and if they will be learning this kind of self governance then there will be no problem in managing the commons. So, by taking the experiences from so many countries across so many resource management of the commons, she actually concluded the, the very basis what she talked about governing the gover governance of the commons. And the third question she also inquired about that what are the key variables that can enhance or detract from the capabilities of individuals to solve the problems. So, again she wanted to find out in the social uh, uh, social sciences basically this kind of uh, um, commons governance is a part of either the political science in the subfield of political science or economics or natural resource management. So, in these cases of social sciences it is very difficult to find out the key variables in the decision making for in terms of governance of the commons. But she try to find out the key variables that can enhance or detract from the capability of the individuals to solve this problem of uh, commons. And in her argument of self governance, she again found uh, uh, try to find out that how to 
solve this collective action problem if the participants they themselves design their own contracts. So, so in a simple way simple manner we can say that this problem of collective actions can be solved by the communities or the very stakeholders or the participants those who are directly extracting the resources and dependent on the resources we are calling them user groups. If this participant themselves they design their own contracts how to govern the commons itself what would be the frequency of the extractions. The very knowledge the traditional knowledge and other knowledge that can be helpful in growing the commons and also for deciding what would be the right time for extraction itself. So, taking into account all these knowledge about the very commons then these participants they themselves can design their own contracts for governing the commons. And who will be participating obviously, the, the, the user groups they will be participating and they will be trying to design their own contracts for governing this commons because the self interest of those participants who negotiated the contract will lead them to monitor each other. Because in this decision making process when you are saying that the it is the user groups they can govern themselves for the very, very sustainability of the resources. So, the question arises that so if there is any loopholes then who is going to monitor it or who is going to check it. So, that is why I say argued because the self interest of these participants. So, they will be negotiating and they will be also leading that who will be monitoring. So, in this case everyone will be monitoring each other's action in extracting the resources and maintaining the resources for in infinite time. And if there is any kind of glitch present in this monitoring system or the contract system so far the, uh, the very obedience or the very following the, uh, the way the uh, participants they are following the rules and regulations or as per the contract then they can each of these members whosoever is finding this glitch it he or she can report. So, that the contract whatever the contract was decided earlier it can be enforced in a very good manner or in a right directions. And so, this is the mechanism she talked about that how to frame these contracts. So, that the commons can be governed by the local community or the users group itself. But if you are thinking about the other kind of mechanisms other than this this uh, concept uh, that she developed. So, that we can talk about either the private mechanisms or a regulatory body or a, or a kind of authority led by the government itself. So, in this case how to monitor this this particular contract or particular rules and regulations developed by the uh, regulatory authority or agency itself. Because in this case in this mechanisms so the regulatory agencies or the authority they need to hire its own monitoring systems or monitors itself who will be monitoring there will be a stereotype or a kind of hierarchy or a bureaucracy you can say or a system that we need to actually hire in this process. So, this this is required under the conditions that if there is any existence of regulatory agency then how the commons will be managed. So, here the regulatory authorities or agencies they will be facing the challenge that how to ensure that monitors do their own job. So, that is again a very critical critical question because in this system so far the regulatory agency is concerned. So, there is there may be some hierarchy or there may be some uh, individual monitors and the question is that if there is some glitch found on the part of the monitors itself then who is going to pick that 
who is going to point out that that it uh, the very system or very monitoring uh, system is not working perfectly. So, this is how we can say in the former case like in case of the uh, community contracts if there is any kind of if there is any kind of glitch found then the participant they can actually point out find the loopholes of each other. But in this mechanisms when the regulatory authority is governed by the private mechanisms or the state mechanisms like your Leviathan and thereby they will be hiring some kind of own monitoring system or you can say monitors. So, in that case it is very difficult to ensure that who is monitoring its own job. There is no third party who can monitor the monitor's job. So, this is the difference between these two strategies of the commons governance. And if you see uh, if you want to find out the, the, the final results or the optimum results that are that are that we can find in uh, in case of the former case that is self governing groups we will be having some kind of parameters. So, what is the very uh, basic parameters that we are talking about in case of self governing the uh, commons the first one is communication among the participants which was largely absent in the second mechanisms that if the governance is controlled by either the state mechanisms or the market mechanisms. Then the communication part among the stakeholders will be lacking, but in this case of self governance this communication among the participant will be frequent and moreover there will be a good understanding or a better understanding of the structure of the game or collective goods itself among the participants. What will be the structure, what will be the actions, what will be the strategies of each of the participants because the communication is frequent. It is not uh, just like the case of your prisoner's dilemma game. So, in prisoner's dilemma ga game there is no communication existing among the participants. So, they are not cooperating, but in this case are the objectives are known that we need to ensure the resources to provide its resources forever and the, the, this is the objective for the participant itself. Then we can say that the uh, we can have a better understanding of the very systems or structure of the game so far the collective goods and the decisions are concerned. So, the next one the third one reliability on others action is one of the important parameters for the optimum results that we are getting in case of self governance. And if you compare this uh, this self governance case uh, with uh, the uh, with this prisoner's dilemma then we will be finding that in case of prisoner's dilemma there is there was no communication taken place among the uh, the participants and the participants both the prisoner, prisoners they did not have any trust on each other's actions right. And uh, uh, where, whereas, in case of self governing groups they do have uh, the participants they do have high uh, trust on each other's actions and uh, that is why the optimum results are obtained in case of self governing groups and whereas, in the other cases the tragedy of the commons and the, the and prisoners and dilemma case these are these things did not happen. They do have trust on each other's actions so far governance is concerned. So, in this context after taking into account many field surveys from this the, the uh, countries across. So, uh, after taking into account so many observations from the field survey. So, uh, her investigations into this institutional approach to CPR uh, self governance to identify the underlying design principles of the institutions used by those who have successfully managed their own CPRs over extended periods of time, she found some characteristics. So, in a nutshell I want to uh, convey this message that 
After undertaking so many field surveys, she got to know the kind of institutional approaches existing for addressing the, uh, the CPR problems and she found there is some, some principles that she told, she uh, uh, pointed out or she named as the design principles of the very institutions itself. And if you, if you are uh, just trying to find the literature on the public policy, then you will be finding this institutional approach is one of the fundamental approaches for delivering a kind, any kind of public policy. So, after getting into, in, after investigating all these stories across the globe in, in across different uh, common pool resources, she found out what are the factors that actually were behind the successful management of the CPRs and she highlighted that these factors are related to the design principles or the very structure of the governance itself. So, when you are talking about the structure of the governance, it was directly leading to the institutional schools of thought or institutional approach to the, to the public policy itself. So, what she found out after getting into uh, uh, getting her investigations into so many successful management uh, CPRs or common property resources or generally we are saying common here. She found that appropriators have devised, applied and monitored their own rules to control the use of their CPRs. So, what is the what is the principle design principle she found? So, those who are appropriating or those who are actually uh, using the resources, they can devise, they can apply and they can monitor their own rules related to how to control the common property resources or commons. They do have freedom to devise, devolve and how to apply, apply, what would be the mechanisms, what would be the strategies, who is going to monitor it. So, every kind of uh, these kind of things are actually controlled by the user groups or these appropriators itself. And the second one is that these resource systems and the institutions they have survived for a long period of time. So, that means from her own observation of the field study, she got to know that designing the principle is utmost uh, importance if you have to successfully manage the commons. This is the first criteria. And that is why for designing this, uh, this principles, the appropriators or user groups, they must have that much of freedom to devise the rules and regulations that how to control this uh, CPRs, how to apply it and how to monitor it. And again, she found this decision or she actually reached these decisions after ana analyzing those systems and those institutions which we are having they are successful story for a quite longer period of time. So, based on this experience, she designed 8 principles for successful self governance of CPR institutions. So, in the next class, we will be discussing the 8 designed principles to manage the CPR and the institutions. And uh, based on uh, the different field studies that she had conducted all over the world, she found some of, uh, some of these uh, stylized facts. So, uh, from her own experience and field surveys, she deduced and de designed uh, principles which is known as the 8 designed principles for managing um, the CPRs successfully. So, that we will be discussing in the next class. Thank you.